nice break after that tension. We have got a nice friendly fight coming up next. Uh, we have one of the good guys. He works in AI, developing software for mental health. He likes hiking, skiing, and whiskey, don't we all? He's doing a PhD in neuroscience. And has, he's got a few fans out there too. He's got his, um, his thesis defense in three days time. So we wish him well for that. All the way from the beautiful city of Padua in Italy, fighting out of Islington Boxing Gym in the white corner, weighing in at 72 kilograms, Francesco Silvestro! Here we come. Let's hear it for Francesco. The Italian national anthem. Here he comes, entering the ring this evening. 72 kilograms. Height 173 centimeters with a reach of 174 centimeters. Let's hear it for Italy and Francesco! <laughs> One more time for Francesco! plays Kabaddi for England. Woo! As we will see, our next fighter's big passion is computer games, especially computer games, especially combat games. In the black corner, let's hear it. Weighing in at 72 kilograms, Felix Intense Lee. <laughs> Weighing 72 kilograms this evening, fighting in the black corner, born in Hong Kong. Let's hear it one more time. Felix Lee. Oh, can we feel the tension in the room? Woo! Not phased, Francesco is not phased. Let's hear it for our fighters, Francesco Silverstone and Felix Intense Lee. <laughs> Chess, 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 ch
we are back and we are joined by Grandmaster David Howell, one of the best chess players in the world, one of the best chess boxing commentators in the world. Gonna make me look like a bloody patser, David. Uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction, Matt. It's so exciting. This is my first time at a chess boxing event, and it has been intense. Just as, as intense as Felix Lee, <laughs> playing with the black pieces, wearing his intense Keanu Reeves style, uh, well, I guess a gray coat, that's clearly black. And we have a Vienna game, David. Yeah, solid start by both players, but it does look like white here. Francesco is livening it up already, going straight on the attack with white. But Felix has done his homework. This is... Uh, well-known position, Matt. Yep, someone, someone knows their theory by the looks of things. Knight takes, knight takes d5, knight takes d5. Thoughts, Chris, you know much about the Vienna game? Know much about Vienna? Not my jam, Matt, but it's a very open game. Pawns being exchanged. We should see the pieces coming into contact pretty quickly here. So, David, um, quite often people say, don't, oh, tick, what, oh God, sorry. Oh, oh, we oh, nearly what, saw a massive <laughs> blunder there early in the God. game. White nearly <laughs> lost his queen. It's only move five. He nearly lost his queen, ladies and gentlemen. The pressure, the pressure is getting to him. So normally you don't get your queens out too early on. Is that an issue for either side here, David? Could potentially be, especially for white, whose queen is sidelined. Black's queen looking perfect in the center right now. Queens are the most valuable piece. So anytime she's attacked, you have to run away. It is a bit risky for both sides, but I like black's last move by Felix. Just bringing the bishop out, getting ready to get his king to safety. Nice little chess boxing adage as well. When you're being attacked, it's good to run away. <laughs> That's uh, my life motto, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Brave of you to say it first. Thanks, David. So a little, bit of a, a little bit of a pause here as Francesco finds his feet. D4, Christ and kidney pudding. What's going on here? That's either genius or madness. White's giving up a pawn. Maybe tempting the black queen to get greedy. What is the plan? It's a bit mysterious, right? Yeah, you want to be developing your pieces here, maybe, rather than moving pawns. It's all about just getting the pieces out get him to good positions and then seeking to and attack at the start. It. And he's taken the pawn. It, it, could it be genius? Could it be madness? Felix is looking to find out. And Francesco Silvestrin, I was going to say he's in the tank, but that hand is hovering with intent. We have 100 or so seconds to go. Is knight f3 the move here? Oh, knight e2. Ooh, bit, of a, bit of a passive square. He's blocked in his own bishop. The proof is in the eating of the pudding. And black got greedy, grabbed a pawn. But it looks like he's going to get away with it. Just keep that queen safe. Felix hovering now. Plants his queen on which square? A safe square. Pinning that white knight, white king is actually the more vulnerable of the two. And threatening that pawn as well. The pawn on c2 is the one just in front of the black squared bishop. Oh, it's looking very good for black right now, Felix. Up on the clock as well. Francesco, his bluff has been called. <laughs> his, bl his bluff has been called. That knight on e2, he would dearly love it to see moves at c3 to attack the queen, but he can't because it'd be check, and the king can't allow himself to get into check. White in the tank here, but every time I say that, he starts to move, making me look like a fool, Francesca. Oh, good lord! G3! Oh, my heart's got a flutter! What's he done? Oh, dear god, that's a poor move. What's going to happen, David? And Chris? Felix spots it. He wins a rook. He grabs that rook in the corner. Black is winning already. Oh dear, Italians across the world, it's been a bad enough few months for them already, and now they have to put up with their man, a rook down. Now he is in the tank. Oh no, he, no now he's moving again, come on. Adhere to the narrative, Francesco, just stop and think. Okay, he's got yeah, away from it. that boxing round, but he moves that's his bishop out, that's a decent move. Yep. He's not Don't. completely dead yet. So he might, he might just shuffle his king across to safety there on the queen side. We saw queen side casting last time. Looks like it's on the cards again this time. And as we saw in the last match, you can come out with a terrible position from the first round, but it can all swing after the boxing. But this is, this is much more terrible, Chris, I think. The knight on e2, was a that was a slightly dodgy move, and then he's lost a rook. And that queen, unless white can find a way to trap that queen and win his material back, I think he might be toast, David. You're right, but we're in for the boxing now. What's a rook between friends, man, you know? <laughs> they might not be friends, for all we know. They're both very affable chaps, but... Yeah, little sigh there from, uh, from Felix. I think he, <laughs> he knows what's happened. Well, a lot went on there. Whose move is it? Is it white's or black's move? Uh, uh, we had, uh, what, knight c6 and then castle's queen side, right? Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a shame it's not white's. Bishop Sorry, bishop, bishop, bishop might be quite nice if it were white's move. Uh, yeah, the, the bishop, bishop h3 seems... Well, hang on, bishop h3 seems quite strong here, doesn't it, David? I think it's the only move. <laughs> He's got to try something at least. I think black has ways to counter that, but... So, 
Bishop, so if Bishop H3, Queen takes H2 is the only move there, right? Uh, possibly Queen E4 should be okay as well. But then Bishop Bishop takes E6. Queen takes E3, check, and oh. Black wins a piece. Black, oh. Black yes. gets enough time to cast. Literally, oh, wow. literally wow. seen so many moves ahead. Oh, no, to be honest, I, 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 it's I not think the most I'm, difficult. No, it's not the most difficult. Just, just too excited. But yeah, I think. You guys try are, something. Yeah, he's got to try something. But you guys are the experts now. Uh, what do you know about these guys in the boxing ring? Chris? Felix is a very fit uh, multi, multi sport man. He plays Kabaddi internationally for wow. England, no less. Um, and you can, you can see he has quite a, a muscular physique there. Francesco, a bit enigmatic. I've not seen him in the ring, but let's see what he brings. He'll certainly have to be looking to pour the pain on in the ring, given the suffering that he had on the chessboard in that first round. And, and of course, he's enigmatic in the sense that this is his debut fight. I mean, Felix, yeah. Felix has only fought one, but he's been around the scene for quite some time. He's he's a you know a world-class Kabaddi player as well. Clearly very, very physically fit. Not saying Francesco isn't, but actually, I, I think Francesco's got his work cut out here. And as we know, an important round, given what's yeah. gone on in the chess. Uh, uh, a essential. little spritzing down of the two there as well. Both of them looking quite calm as they eye, eye each other up across the ring. Felix looking quite casual almost there. He, the, the air of a man who's a rook up. Yeah, <laughs> the air of a man who's very focused on the boxing now. We're about to get going. Words from referee Ronan Lodo Valgids to the two ex-Cuban uh, amateur fighter. No less telling me he wants to see it clean. The last fight was most definitely not clean. What do you make of the boxing in the last fight, David? I mean, this is the first time I've ever watched boxing live. I've watched it on, uh, on the big screen, but uh, it was very intense. <laughs> And, you uh, can really feel those landings. You feel the passion. I, be I bet it makes you want to just step right into that <laughs> ring and take, take on the Mike Tysons of the chess boxing scene. Oh! Mm -hmm. Felix opening up with a big right there, straight out of the box. Didn't quite land, but he's trying it again. Francesco coming back with a counter of his own, landing a decent jab as well. Good head movement from Felix. You can see as he's coming in, he's really paying attention to moving his head right to left to avoid being an easy target there. Good work from both, but no one's landed anything clean yet. Really is a feeling each other out phase. They both are quite light on their feet as well. You like to see that there. If you look at the footwork, they're dancing around, not planting their feet too much. Uh, uh, on the intensity front, Francesco has that 100-yard stare going on, which I know I would sort of traditionally associate with, you know, a Dan Mayfield character, these men in white that come and just spread blood all over the ring. And... Felix is definitely holding his own here, but I would not be surprised if Francesco could turn the tide in the boxing and it becomes a hybrid uh, event in its most traditional. Yeah, but you can, you can already see the, the lines of battle being demarcated. Francesco perhaps slightly the physically stronger man, although as I say that, oh, Felix oh, lands a big left hook and follows it in by piling in into that corner there. Oh, and he's really on the attack now. He knows that he stung Francesco there. That's taking the wind out of Francesco's sails. He was doing quite well until then. Having said that, he then immediately comes back, Francesco, with a couple of cuffing rights of his own. That thousand-yard stare, as you were saying, man. I wouldn't want to be opposite either of them on a dark night. Although, as I mentioned earlier, both are very affable chaps and very pleasant to speak to. But as I say that, Felix is giving it his all. A rook is not enough, as far as he's concerned. He wants to take him out on both fronts. By rook or left hook. By he rook wants to win. Or left hook. I'm David. a bit speechless here, guys. I'm leaving it to you. I'm just entranced by the, uh, <laughs> the intensity. And wow, OK, the end of the first boxing round. But what do you make of that? Chris? I mean, yeah. I mean that, that was probably the most technically proficient boxing of the night that we have seen. They were, they were both very correct in excellent physical shape. Um, they both had very good moments there. I thought Felix had a couple of moments where he had Francesco trapped in this corner in front of us and was landing those quite wide, winging hooks. But then Francesco, every time he thought he was just starting to suffer, would come back um, with some punishment of his own. So now we really get to this fascinating moment where we see just how much it affects the playing of chess yep. after one boxing round. Given, given that uh, no, David point, pointed out that Bishop H3, which looks like a nice trick, Queen, Queen E4 is a useful response. Does Knight C3 preparing Bishop H3, giving the Queen in that many squares? Is that a plan here? It could be the best bet. Oh, he needs yes. to set up some type of trick against that oh, Black Queen. Yes, that... Keep her caged, maybe. I like your move. I like your suggestion, Matt. But will he have the kind of patience to play that kind of trickery to set up that tactic 
after such a kind of fast and furious boxing round. That That's needs a lot of self-control to not create a threat immediately. That's a nasty trick that you have posited there, Matt. So Knight C3 controlling those potential escape squares from the Queen as we're about to go back yeah. to the board. I, I think really the key thing for Francesco is to not, not play instantly. Both sides really need to take a moment to recover from that quite intense round. Even if they lose 30 seconds or so on the clock, one bad move could change the course of the game. And we're back. Francesco hey. has instantly played Bishop H3. The move I thought was really good, but David, you spotted an idea for Black here. Yeah, there are two ideas. Black's queen is under attack. As long as she keeps herself safe, she has only two safe squares. So process of elimination, Felix does centralize his queen, does attack oh. an undefended bishop. He's found the solution. He's found a way out and he's back in control. What self-control though, to just find so quickly such a nice regrouping idea. A, a, a move that this commentator rather embarrassedly missed uh, minutes ago. Felix, a man who's literally been punched in the face for the last three <laughs> minutes, finds instantly. So this has been, it's been a humbling evening, ladies and gentlemen, but it's looking good for Felix Lee. Uh, it's mightily impressive play so far, but will he keep it up? White has won a piece back. This bishop cannot be captured by a black pawn. That black pawn is pinned. The white queen doing a decent job so far, but okay, Felix is pausing. This is a good use of time. This is a good moment. He's put in the hard yards. He's won a rook. He just needs to take a time out and consolidate. So black can't take the bishop on e6 because it would be check. So white, having lost that rook, has won a piece back. But David, there was a trick with queen e4 in mind, wasn't there? Yeah, and I, I see Felix's hand hovering over his queen. Okay, he doesn't take the other white bishop, was, which was up for... Oh, oh, oh no! He's been oh, spooked. He's he been... has been spooked there. He could have just taken the bishop back. Like a horse in a lightning storm, Felix Lee has been spooked, and he has unnecessarily given up a bishop when queen takes e3 check was on the cards, probably bringing the game to an end after castles. It just shows what happens after one round of boxing. The chess can change in an instant. Uh, it's the first time he's flinched. He's been so impressive so far. But that shows a mentality shift. He's just trying to defend. He has got the queens off, but Francesco is back in the game. The material deficit is not decisive yet. But by taking the, taking the queen on g6 with the h pawn, generally you want to capture towards the center, but now rook takes h2 is a possibility as well, isn't it? Yeah, I think Felix has spotted that. His eyes just darted towards his rook, but no, he prioritizes castling his king. Very sensible, but... That does leave some pawns potentially loose. So Felix has lost some of his advantage, but he still is up on material and probably has the better position here. But Francesco coming back into it in this second round of Bishop chess. takes F7. He's picked up a pawn. Francesco is grotting his way back into the game. Rook takes H2, though, winning the pawn back. What can White do here? So he's started to turn the balance a bit. Is there anything White can do to turn it some more? just has to stay in it. He just has to move his knight, which is under attack from Black's Rook now. He just has to stay in the game, keep his pieces protected, maybe wait for the next round of boxing. It's still an uphill struggle, but the advantage is slowly starting to slip away from Felix. And uh, yeah, okay, good move there from Francesco. He does put his knight in a very safe square. I like what he's doing. He has recovered from that really poor early start. So many great players complimenting these chess players, these amateur chess players, and I can't hear a word that's going on. Yeah, absolutely love it. <laughs> Biggest chess compliment they'll ever receive, and they hear it in total silence. They know. They know they're playing better They know. Now. They know <laughs> what they're doing. Yeah, I'm sure Felix played Queenie 4 with a wry, a wry smile earlier. But yeah, it's, um, it's not looking good. But, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to see a round of boxing. Another round of boxing is inevitably coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, and Francesco, he's got the muscle, he's got the grit, and he's got the heart to knock Felix down, to knock him down, and to make all of this nonsense totally superfluous. I'm, I'm really impressed with how he has clawed himself back into this. Yeah, and time is, yeah, time is reasonably level as well. He's still got a bit of time for the next chess round. Uh, he can hopefully look to force even two rounds of boxing out of his position here if he can. And a small slip by Francesco, just at the end there just before we head into the boxing. Small slip there. Tell yeah, us a little bit more, I David. Think Black's Rook, the Rook on the 8th oh, oh, isn't doing anything, could slide across, attack both White's bishops, skewer those two White bishops, and one of them is doomed. 
It's uh, maybe yeah. there's a sneaky way for White to escape, but it's not going to be easy. I, to I suppose Bishop G1 limits the damage slightly, does yeah, it? Yeah, but uh, <laughs> there are plenty of ways there. Oh, Black Bishop can, takes F4. Take an F4, a, then take yeah. an E6. Black does have several ways, I think, there to guarantee a decisive endgame. And then those grotty G pawns roll down the board. Uh, it's not just those grotty G pawns, it's an extra piece. Yeah, it's yep. going to be difficult for Francesco. <laughs> so, talk us through what happened there. We saw uh, Felix really coming, really letting some of the advantage slip there. He did get spooked a little bit. Obviously, he's now got this trick that we're talking about. Um, if he sees it and executes it, he'll really get most of that advantage back. But that was a good round up until then from Francesco, I thought, from what was a pretty hopeless position at the start. Exactly. I think he'll be feeling more confident, at least. I saw his body language sitting at the board. He was quite chilled. He was quite relaxed. He knows he's fought his way back on the board, at least somewhat. And uh, now he can go again. It's interesting. I think this is probably the most that... In all the time I've been doing this, any commentator has spoken about body language, like even, even kind of like, c concept, like cumulatively what we've been saying. It's something that it seems you have quite a, a knack for spotting. Is this something that tends to be a factor when you're playing high level chess, David? It's, it's important in any, any sport I feel. I've played tens of thousands of chess games uh, online over the board and body language, people's reactions. You can tell after a while how they're feeling and... Um, I'll leave it to you guys to take over the boxing side as um, these two technically proficient <laughs> boxers. Yeah, talking of body again. language, Francesco is looking focused again. Um, and again, given that he knows his position isn't the best, he's a good enough player to know that he's facing up to the worst side of things on the chessboard. He was coming out stronger there in this opening 30 seconds of the next stanza in boxing. So letting, letting a good right to the body there. Sorry, man. Given that Felix, he, you know, he, he might win the next round. He'll certainly win on the chess eventually. What should he be doing? What should he not be doing, Chris? If I was Felix, I'd be looking to stay out of trouble. But often, they're the best way to do that. Could be to be the aggressor yourself. Uh, so rather than looking to dance around and stay out of the way, give your opponent something to think about. Some counterplay, as it were, in boxing terms, rather than simply trying to passively stay out of trouble. Ooh. And the counterplay there with that right hand to the, to the body, to the kidney there of Francesco, definitely leading to a bit of a wince on Francesco's face, which is the first time I've seen that in the boxing action. Going in for the wild uppercut, but missing there, Felix. And I've got to ask about a game plan. Do you feel these two, in the boxing sense, have they come in with a game plan? Are they sticking to it? Have they been consistent so far? I think Francesco is the taller man was certainly looking to keep it a little bit a distance. Felix has those powerful punches from the shorter levers that he has. He's looking to close the distance. So you can see he's the one at the center of the ring looking to stalk. Francesco is the one dancing around looking to establish a little bit more length. And you see, as soon as Felix closes the gap there, he lands that body punch. Oh. Uh, they often say that what you want to do to slow a fighter down is you keep banging away to the body and it will just gradually take the legs away uh, from underneath him. Francesco does look to be losing a little bit of puff. Because mm. actually, uh, one thing that's really uh, made this fight star, and that's the best, the stand out compared to the others is the, the sheer fitness of both participants has been remarkable. Even in the, the Mayfield versus Fraser fight, you could feel the kind of huffing and puffing because it was quite so intense. Here it feels like there are two sort of really high quality athletes, not clearly Richard and Dan are as well, but yeah. they, they are not letting themselves get flagged, which yeah. is unfortunately, it's probably going to be to Francesco's detriment because he might well fail to make another boxing round. Yeah, on the board and the clock, he is struggling. And uh, I guess we'll see more hints about whether they have tired mentally, whether, they've, uh, <laughs> they, whether they can refocus, especially Felix, this next couple of moves, he can land that knockout blow on the board, but... Uh, if he does, maybe let Francesco squirm his way back to, or at least survive the next few moves on the board. It, it's, it's not taken for granted it's that he will see it. Done. This yeah. is this is the danger moment the on the chest. Next two, three moves. That Francesco, he could miss it entirely. Uh, especially as time starts to become a little bit of a factor and they're going to have to speed up their moves a bit. So yeah, that's the big question. Will he spot uh, that double attack on the pair of bishops? Uh, oh. by swinging the rook across behind them. I mean, I suppose, I mean, David alluded to, like, how easy it is to clean up after a move like rook e8, bishop g1. I suppose the problem is, even if Felix does miss rook e8, the kind of, the similar follow-up moves are still going to be there, right? That's true. That's true. There's, you can go after white's isolated f-pawn. You can just give black's king some breathing space. It's not clear what white is doing over the next few moves, how he keeps his position together. And uh, I've got to ask, the clock situation, how big a factor is that? Considering they're quite balanced at the boxing so far, or at least it seems to me, a layman here. 
Yep, Francesco with the worst position and with less time on the clock is facing an uphill battle here. Uh, and he's found it! He's found rookie eight! His bishops are skewered! If the white squared bishop moves, the dark squared bishop will drop off. If the white squared bishop doesn't move, it'll drop off. Is there anything white can do to limit the damage, David? I think you're right, Matt. To minimize the damage right now, white has to drop back his dark squared bishop. It would drop off anyway, as you mentioned. Go and attack that black rook on h2. It's undefended. You do at least set some traps for Felix there. You force Felix to calculate. And that's not easy after a couple of rounds of boxing. He's about to find the best move on the board. He does, Francesco. Oh, he keeps the fight what alive. Hero. What a hero, Francesco. Keeping it alive and keeping the chance of another round of boxing. Felix is going to have a bit of a think here now. This is tricky. It's winning for him, but he has to find the right path here. So he knows this is the moment to invest the time. Have a think. Slow down. Slow down that heart rate a little bit, Felix. Yeah, you Take can see the discipline. Time. You can see that discipline on him. Uh, he's just pausing. He's calculating. He's about to take a pawn, I think. There we go. Bishop takes pawn. Is a check. White has to spend a move. Putting his king on a pretty poor square where it could get trapped later. And uh, yeah, I just love what Felix is doing. Again, if he pauses, slows himself down, he can potentially see that he can take white's light square bishop. So I think, I think black, I think we all agree black has a technically winning position, but both these men have been punched many, many times. Oh, oh, oh goodness me, rook to, D, rook to D2. It's like he's a mathematician, he just wants to simplify the equation, swap off pieces, ah, oh. trade off rooks. Well, I mean, uh, there, both sides potentially had some back rank mating threats. Maybe there was a part of him that thought, oh, in theory, it's possible that rook ends up on DA. I am just going to trade it down to a position where I know I win and then just take it from there. So Matt, Rook D2, any, any sort of problems with Rook D2? Matt, Are we comfortable? I would just say there is nothing I want to see more than some back rank mating. But <laughs> with that, back to the chess. <laughs> yeah, it does look like Francesco's hopes of back rank mating will be over in the next move or two. I love that move. The more I look at it from Felix, he also had an eye on the clock. I saw him look away at the clock a couple of times. He's fully aware that he's up quite significantly now. Francesco's struggling, and if the Rooks come off, no chance of a counter-attack. There's something really beautiful about playing a good move, but not the one your opponent expects when they're really down on the clock. That bishop on e6 is still in a world of trouble. The back oh, no! oh, no! is Here coming! It is! There it is! Oh, oh, it's been reversed! Oh, Francesco! Rook to e1 brings it to a dramatic close! He needed to play bishop to g4 or something similar to just keep it going. Back, back mate! Back, back right. right. You yeah. called it, Agris. Back Fortune rank, teller. mate. But, but I suppose I bishop takes for. c3 and then rook, uh, rook e1, whatever, yeah. and that would have brought... Well, or actually just rook e1 winning the bishop would have brought it to an end anyway. Yeah, that was looking very good for Felix. I guess it has a climax at the end. The end was shortened, but he took the win. He deserved the win. I, I think, you know, good opportunity to, like, wow, eke out a grandmaster a compliment well for a, a chess match. Pretty well game, played game by How Black, as it goes. Francesco? I mean, if you showed me this game, you didn't tell me the names and ratings, I would have given him an extra thousand rating points. That was Never very impressive stuff in the ring and on the board. <laughs> and our winner, this evening.